that has probably impacted my life more than anything else, okay? And here's what it is, right? I'm going to give you the truth in a nutshell, and then we're going to go through it from God's Word, all right? The day will come when you, as an individual, by yourself, will stand before a God in heaven and answer for your life. We're going to go through verses in the Bible we're going to talk about today, something called the judgment seat of Christ. There is an event coming in sometime in the future where you will stand before God. Now, we need to clear up something real quick. There are two separate judgment seats in the Bible. One of them is called the Great White Throne Judgment. Okay? That is for, that is the day when people who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior will be judged for their sin and cast into hell. Okay? That is called the Great White Throne Judgment. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you cannot, will not be there. And you don't want to be there. Okay? Because there is no sacrifice for sin, but Jesus Christ shed blood on Calvary. And if you have not accepted that, you will stand before God in judgment at the great white throne and be cast into hell. But, if you have, and I believe probably everybody, at least most everybody in here, has accepted Jesus as their Savior. I don't see anybody in here that I not only have not seen you before, but I know your name. Okay? All of you have been here before. All of you, I believe, I believe, have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you know that you're going to heaven one day. Okay? So, your sins will not be judged before God in heaven. They already were on Calvary. So let's clear that up. But the Bible says that you will stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ and answer to him for the life that you've lived. So the purpose of this lesson, we're going to go through quite a bit of Bible verses today. The purpose of this lesson is this. I want you to get it fixed in your mind that every single decision you make runs through the filter how am I going to explain this to God? Because one day, you will. So when you turn on that music that blasphemes God and has all kinds of wicked, vile things in it, how are you going to explain that to God? Because one day you will. When you pull up filth on your phone and you look at it on purpose, you will stand before God one day and try to explain why you did that. Last week we talked about church and the importance of church and being here, and I'm glad that you all are, and I'm not going to hammer that again. But suffice it to say this, when you go off and you get a job, or you get involved in some sport, or you get a girlfriend, or whatever the case may be, that pulls you out of church, understand you'll answer to God for that someday at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? So run everything through that filter is the purpose of today's lesson. How am I going to explain this to God? And understand that it works both ways. Okay, I'm a parent, or the Dave's a parent. There have been times when my kids have come to me and told me that they did something good and positive and right without being asked. Generally, they get rewarded for that in some form or fashion. It works the same way with God. So before I get too much into it, I've covered most of it, but we're going to go through several things here. First of all, in Romans chapter 14, verse number 10, and I'm going to turn to a lot of verses. I encourage you again, bring your Bible to class, and you won't be able to keep up with me turning to all of these, but bring your Bible to class. I see several of you got papers and pens out. I love that. It's great. Write these down. Look them up later. The judgment seat of Christ is one where believers will give an account to God for their works. In other words, for what they did. Before you get saved, okay, you getting saved has absolutely nothing to do with anything you've done. Okay? The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I don't know how God could have made it more clear 
that you cannot work for salvation. Multiple verses in the Bible teach that salvation is not about works. It's not about what you've done. Too many people wrongly think that when we get to heaven, our good and our bad is going to be weighed in some sort of balance. And if you've done more good than bad, you go to heaven. That's wrong. It's false doctrine. That's a lie. Okay? You're either saved or you're not. But after the point of salvation, when you know you're a Christian and you know you're a child of God, it's all about works and what you've done and the motives behind it and all of that. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 14, verse number 10, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? In other words, why have a disagreement with somebody that is a brother in Christ that's also saved? The last part of the verse says, For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. In other words, it's not my job to judge your life and what you've done, and it's not your job to judge mine, but you are going to stand before God, and he debts your will. If you jump down to verse number 12, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. It is a place where you'll be judged by God. It's also a place of individual judgment. If you do something stupid, and we all have at some point in our lives, me and Brother Dave can stand up and testify all the dumb things that we've done. There are times, okay, when my answer to my dad or a time when I got in trouble was, well, so-and-so said, or this friend in my, in me, that ain't going to work with God. You're going to stand before God by yourself. And the Bible says every one of you will give an account of himself to God. And every time that I tried to blame it on somebody else, every time I tried to pin it on somebody else or that it was their fault and I was just going along with it, Dad generally said something to the effect of, I don't care. They're not my kid. You are. And you're not going to do those kinds of things. So if my earthly father wouldn't let that fly, you think God's going to let that fly? while somebody else or when they were doing it or while I was just going along with the crowd, it's not going to fly. You will give an account. The Bible says that uh, every one of us shall give an account of himself. It's a day of individual judgment. It will be a day of rewards and disappointments. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number 22, the very last book, the very last chapter, Revelation Chapter 22, verse number 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to as his work shall be. So now, understand, God is not this big ogre up in heaven, standing there with a, you know, with a baseball bat, just waiting to poke you on the head when you mess up. That's not it at all. It's actually completely opposite. God is waiting and anxious to reward you. He wants to bless your life. He wants to be able to be on your side, as it were, and he wants someday in heaven to reward you for things. That is his desire. But he's also just and holy. And he cannot reward certain behavior. You can also, the Bible says, lose rewards that you thought you were going to get. Primarily, the judgment seat of Christ is a time when God will reward believers for good things they've done if they've done it for the right reason. We're going to turn all the way back to 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 10. 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 10. Let me get over there quick. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. There is rewards for good. There is disappointment and punishment for bad. When God was teaching his disciples about humility, he pointed at this group of people called the Pharisees, and he said, don't be like them. He said, they try and do good things, and they give money at the temple, and they fast and pray and all of this stuff in the public square. 
so that they can be seen, so that they can be praised by men. He said that praise that they're receiving from people, that's the reward. So they ain't getting nothing from me, bros. They ain't getting anything from me. He said when they want to be rewarded by other people noticing their good works, that's, that's what they're going to get. He said, but when you're praying to the Father in secret, when you're reading your Bible by yourself, when you're giving to others that cannot give back just for the purpose of helping them. The Bible says, Jesus said, if you give a cup of water to someone for Jesus' sake, you'll be rewarded for that. But if you give someone help and aid because you want to be seen of men, well, then you have your reward. But if you do it for Jesus' sake, the Bible says he will reward you for it. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 5. We're going to turn back. It won't take me very long to get here. 1 Corinthians 4, verse number 5. The Bible says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. So God is coming back. So both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of the heart. Then shall every man have praise of God. Because all of those good things that you did that no one else knew about, because you did it for the right reason, you were trying to be helpful, you were trying to serve God, and that was your only motive, and nobody knew about it, said one day, in the right way, everyone will find out. Because you will be rewarded by God in heaven very openly and very publicly. Because that is God's desire to praise you, to honor you, and to reward you for the good that you've done that was done for the right reasons. God is interested in the sincerity of our Christian service. Our motivation for serving should be to please God, to show others our love for him. The things done for Christ that matter for eternity will last. I said it would be a day of reward and disappointments. It's possible to lose a reward that you thought you were going to get. 1 Corinthians 3, if we jump back just one chapter, verse 11 through 15, we'll elaborate on this a little bit. I'm going to read it. The Bible says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build on this foundation, in other words, Jesus Christ is the foundation. He's the reason and the motive, and you're doing things to add to the work that he has done. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. In other words, it will come to fruition. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, so as yet by fire. In other words, the Bible says, the works that you've done, you cannot lose your salvation, but you can lose your rewards for what you've done by not having the right motives, by not having the right reasoning, by wanting praise of men and wanting honor of men and not doing it for the service of God. And you think, well, I did this, that, or the other. You know, I taught the teen guys Sunday school class, and I ran the Mount Pleasant bus route, so... Bless God, I bet I'm going to be rewarded. But if my reason for it was because I wanted people to see it and know it, man, I got to teach this Sunday school class. And I go around talking about it all the time. And look at me. I'm not going to get a reward in heaven for that because that's nonsense. But if we're doing our things for the right reasons to serve God, then is when he will reward us at that day of the judgment seat of Christ. So how do we get rewarded then? How do we get rewards in that day? But then you can make sure that you tell me when we're close to 11. Yeah. Kind of watch with you. So first of all, we've already talked about this some, but we, we can get rewarded for serving others. We're going to turn over to the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse number 41. And I think I've already, I think I've already alluded to this verse, but we'll um, get over here real quick. Mark 9, verse number 41. Yes, the Bible says, For whosoever shall give you a cup of shall give a you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ. Verily I say unto you, you shall not lose his reward. So we can be rewarded by God for serving others, for doing things for others. 
you understand if you I've I've pushed you guys to do this a few times before, but if you get up and you ask your bus captain on your bus, hey, can I help you with anything? Can I sweep the bus? Can I help pass out anything? Is there anything I can do on here for you? You'll be rewarded for that by God if it's for the right motives. If at school you see somebody struggling and you come alongside them and you try to help them out, you can be rewarded for that by God in heaven. If you know that there's somebody that's you guys don't necessarily have as much opportunity for this yet, but as you get older, you know that there's somebody that's struggling and they got a bill that they really need to get paid or need some help in some way, and you give them some money and you don't go, you know, yakking about it and bragging about it to everybody else and how much you did and how great of a guy you were to help these people, but you did it out of a true, genuine heart for love to help. Do you understand you'll be rewarded by God for that because you're doing His work? You can be rewarded for helping others. One more verse on that: Hebrews six, verse number ten. Hebrews six. Verse number 10, we're going to get back over here real quick. The Bible says here, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister, in other words, continuing to do things. It is easy for us as humans to forget things that people have done nice for us to help us. They help us out of a problem, a, a pinch, some something that's come up and somebody helps us along and we get out of that and we move on and time passes and it's easy for us to forget but there's a god in heaven that doesn't forget when you help people and when you do things for others for the right reason for the right with the right heart god will remember that um, we've already talked about this also some but proverbs 19 verse number 17 the bible talks about giving to the poor talks about helping others that cannot help themselves or cannot help you back in Proverbs 19, verse 17, the Bible says, He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. So the Bible says, if you give money to help someone that's poor and they're struggling and you're giving it out of a heart of love and a desire to help, the Bible says, you have not loaned them money. God says, you've loaned me money, and I'm going to pay back my bills. This is what God is saying here. He says, when you're helping somebody, even financially, God says, you're not giving a loan to them. You're giving it to me, and I'm going to pay you back for that. So you can be rewarded for serving uh, others. You can be rewarded for helping the poor. And then, in any way of serving the Lord, the Bible says, uh, let's get over here to Colossians. If you, got, if you still have your Bible open, Colossians. I know I've turned to a bunch of verses, but I want you to understand that this is not my opinion. And this is not just what I'm saying, but this is from the Bible. This is from God. The Bible says in Colossians 3, Verse 23 and 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But, flip side of that, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. For there is no respect to persons. So God gives us both sides of the coin here. He says, if you are serving me, You'll be rewarded. And if you're doing wrong, guess what? You're going to pay for that too. So God gives us both sides of the coin. You can be rewarded for serving the Lord. Every good thing a believer does with the right heart will be rewarded. Our primary motive should always be our love for God. In the Bible, there's this parable, and I've taught it before, and a bunch of people have taught it before, the parable of the talents. A talent in the Bible is a piece of money. And there's this parable, this story that Jesus taught. A parable is a, a, most of the time, a fictional story that is used to illustrate a real truth. So God tells this parable where he says, this guy that had a bunch of money and owned a bunch of land, and he had three servants that worked for him. And the first one he gave ten talents to, and the second one he gave five talents to, and the third one he gave one talent to. And he was going to be gone for a determined amount of time. And then he was going to come back. When he comes back, he goes to the first guy. says, I gave you ten talents. What would you do with it? And the guy says, well, I took those ten and I, I invested it. And I did some buying and selling. And I made, I've now got twenty. I made ten more. He goes to the second guy and he says, I gave you five. What would you do with it? He says the same thing. Well, you know, I invested it, I traded it, I bought and sold some stuff, and now I've got 10. I've got five more than I had. And he goes to the first guy, 
says, I gave you one. What'd you do with it? And he said, well, I knew that, you know, you were going to be expecting me to have this when it got back. So I buried it in the ground and I've got it. And he, uh, Jesus answers him and says, that was a wicked and slothful servant. And he basically gets thrown out of being a servant. Now, you cannot lose your salvation, but you can lose your reward. And God takes that one talent, or the master takes that one talent that he had and takes it back away from him. So the first guy has 20, the second guy has 10, the guy that had one loses the one that he had. The principle is God has given all of you abilities. He has given all of you ways that you can serve him. And some of it, I would say probably most of it, you don't even see now. Understand, I graduated from a homeschool graduation class. There were 12 of us. I was the only one of the 12 that did not get up and speak. I did not give a graduation speech. Because I was not about to get up in front of people and talk. It was not going to happen. Now, I love teaching. I love preaching. I love being able to serve the Lord in this way. But at that age, it was not going to happen. God would use the gifts and abilities that he's given you. Some of you have no problem standing up here talking. Some of you could be skilled with an instrument. Some of you could sing. Some of you could drive a bus. Some of you could be a bus captain. Every single one of you in here has an area, has a place where you can serve God. And the reason why God gave you that talent or ability he wants you to use it for him so that when the day comes that you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, his desire is to reward you. But that is on you, not on him. He wants to. He has the ability to and has a really good memory. But if you take the talents and gifts and opportunities that he's given you, you waste your life. It doesn't mean you won't go to heaven. If you're saved, you can't lose your salvation. I know I keep hitting that nail, but I want it to be driven home that you understand you cannot lose your salvation, but you absolutely can lose your reward from God in heaven that wants to give it to you. So you can be rewarded for serving others. You can be rewarded for helping the poor. You can be rewarded for serving the Lord. You can be rewarded for sharing the gospel. The main reason why we're still here is to tell others about God. I've heard it described this way. Giving the gospel or soul winning is one beggar telling another beggar where he found bread at. If you knew that a bunch of people were starving to death and you had a whole bunch of food and you kept it to yourself, how wicked would that be? Okay. But at the same time, we understand there's a world of people dying and going to hell. And we know what the Bible says because we've come to church, we've heard the truth, we've understood it, and we've accepted it, and we don't tell anyone else. That is even more wicked than letting people starve when we have food. Allowing people to go to hell when we have the opportunity to tell them there's another way. Salvation is available through Jesus Christ. So we can be rewarded for sharing the gospel. Do you also know, though, this gets a little more in everyday life. Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 36. This one hits home to everyone. I'm going to read the verse first. Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You understand, like I was saying before when I started this, that the driving factor to be living right is that I'm going to have to answer to God for everything that I've done. According to this verse, you'll answer to God for everything you've ever said. The Bible says every idle word spoken will be judged by God at the judgment seat of Christ. Every time you've ever back talked, every time you've ever mouthed off, 
every time you've ever said a word, a curse word, something you know you shouldn't have said. The Bible says every idle word. You say, well, nobody heard it. God did. And the day is going to come when God is going to say, start bringing those up. You understand eternity never ends, okay? So when you say, well, man, it's going to take a long time to go through my life. Yeah, they're going to be like billions of people in heaven. And there's no end time. So guess what? God's got all the time he wants to go through every single thing you've ever said. So when that thought pops in your mind and you really want to mouth off, understand, how am I going to explain this to God? Because I don't think oops is going to fly. But I mean, well, I messed up. It's going to go over real well. My bad, broski. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to look at God and say, my bad. And you understand, I, me, Philip, teacher, is going to have some times of my life that when God is going through those, it ain't going to be pretty. Uh, yes, I'm trying to do things to serve God out of a true heart, and I want to be rewarded for it. Understand, I'm also trying to make up for a whole lot of time that I know. I'm going to have some explaining to do, and it isn't going to be real pretty. So you will give an account to God. The Bible says every idle word spoken. Also, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 7. 1 Peter 1, verse number 7. The Bible says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold, though it be tried with fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Every single person that has ever lived and that ever will live is going to go through hard times, is going to go through trials. Guys, please stop messing with the paper. And understand that it could be, it could be that God knows there is someone watching your life and how you respond to that heartache how you respond to that trial could affect their thinking of God the Bible, going to church getting saved, how you respond to heartache very well could affect someone else and will affect someone else that's watching your life so the Bible says that in the day of judgment, at the judgment seat of Christ, your rewards, or lack thereof, part of that will be decided by the trials that you went through in life that God allowed you to go through so that others could see the hand of God at work in your life. I've taught a whole lesson on this before, but there is a story in the Bible that was a real event that happened where the disciples are on the sea and they get into a storm and seasoned veteran fishermen get freaked out scared because the storm is so bad Jesus walks out on the water calms the storm gets in the boat and they go to the other side when they land on the other side of the shore they meet a demon possessed maniac could it be that the reason why he was willing to listen was because he was standing on the hillside watching the storm. Could it be the reason why somebody would be willing to listen to you when you invite them to church and tell them about God is because they saw you go through something hard and they watched your life handle that difficulty, that trial, that injustice that never should have happened and wasn't right and they saw you handle it correctly and they said I want the God that he has you will answer